Okay, our last bo uh, box is activity, guys. We hit a couple of really important things. Maybe the most important is that when particles make a force, it's when they hit something. Just like with our ball rolling into the cup, the force was created when the ball hit the cup. And we call that pressure or air pressure, if you want. We also last time found out that we can alter air pressure by altering the size of the box that we have. And the reason for this is very simple. If you have a small box, the ball doesn't, or the particle doesn't have to go as far before it hits the side of the box and makes a pressure. You're gonna get a lot more hits in a small space than you are a big space where that particle has to travel a lot longer distance. So that was our first boxes activity we did. We found out that we could alter pressure just by changing the size of the box. And again, that assumes a closed system where we have the same amount of mass the whole time. So that brings us to today is where we want to talk about two other ways we can alter pressure. And one of them, they're both actually pretty simple, but the first one is I'm going to put this in the small box. I have one bit of mass in there or one air molecule. And if I shake it, it makes a pressure. And every time you hear it hit, that's a pressure. Well, how can I increase that pressure right now without doing any other changes to my system? Well, the way I would do it is shake the box a lot faster. I get a lot more noise, which means a lot more hits, which means more pressure. And we know from our last unit exactly how we can speed molecules up. And all we would have to do is change one thing about the air molecules to make them either go faster or slower. And we talked a lot about that when we were in our thermal energy unit. So that one way to do this would be just to speed those existing air molecules up. A faster, a faster air molecule, boom, 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 is going to make a lot more hits than a slower molecule. So that's a second way that we can alter air pressure by making the actual particles move faster. Now a third way that we can alter the pressure as well is we can simply put more particles in there. One, two, three, four. And now we can rattle those around. And of course, with more particles, we're going to get a lot more noise, a lot more hits, meaning a lot more pressure. And that is simply by adding particles, which really means you're adding or taking away mass, because we know that air has mass from the very first activity we did this year. And it doesn't matter what size space you have, if you add particles. Essentially, when your family fills your tires in your car up with air, what they're doing is they're adding a lot of particles to your car tire. And that is significantly, as you can imagine, raising the air pressure in your car's tires and that air pressure is what makes your tires fill up and make your car not touch the ground. Another thing that you have at home, some of you, that does the same thing is if you have an air compressor. An air compressor is just a machine that forces mass into a tank. And it raises the air pressure in the tank and it allows us to do all sorts of cool jobs with your air compressor. So again, two new ways to alter pressure. One would just be to speed the existing particles up. One would be to either add particles to raise pressure or take particles out to lower pressure. That's it. Thanks for watching.